Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing another math video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to do a pretty elaborate uh, explanation of slope intercept form. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to um, graph slope intercept form and how to find the equation if you're given a graph. I'm also going to talk a little bit about um, if you got two points given to you, how you can find slope intercept form of a line. Uh, if you find this video useful, uh, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you need to do, and all that YouTube stuff. Uh, all right, guys, so y equals mx plus b, probably the most well-known uh, well form of a line. And it's really important if you're going towards calculus and pre-calculus in school, you need to be able to figure this stuff out. So y equals mx plus b. First of all, let's explain sort of how this works. So this m here, that is the slope. So the slope is essentially a description of the steepness of a line. So what kind of slant is on it? So a high number would be like really, really slanted. And then a low number would be less slant, sort of like that. Um, of course, it would be negative, And if negative, uh, negative slopes would look like this. So it would go down as it was going to the right. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the specific question. And of course, B, the reason why they call it slope-intercept form is because M is the slope, B is the Y-intercept. So it's a very useful um, equation of a line because you can tell the slope. The slope is one of the most useful parts of the line, and then the other more useful part will be the Y-intercept. Um, so it does have its sort of uh, its place, but we also have to keep in mind that, um, you know, there are two other different forms of the line, general form and slope point form. So although, like, I was sort of, when I did math growing up, slope intercept form was it. That's what we use for everything. There are other forms that are more useful. And uh, you might want to check out some of my other videos. If you're just looking for everything you want to know about lines, this video is just on slope intercept form. All right, so let's look at my first example. Um, and the first example is just identifying the slope and the y-intercept from y equals mx plus b form. So obviously this is really fundamental to be able to do this stuff. If you can't tell what slope is and what the y-intercept is, you don't have a chance of doing the other stuff. So the slope, which we call m, don't know why, but it is called m, is given in front of the variable. So it's always in front of the variable. So our slope this, in this particular example is negative 4. My y-intercept is always the constant. So it's basically what you get left with if you're going to let x equal 0. So if you let x equal 0, this term would go away. So then you'd be left with just the 14. So my y-intercept b is 14. All right, let's give it, uh, let's do another example of that. So if we have something like this, and again, so that this is kind of flipped around a little bit. So that's, that's why I say the slope is always in front of the variable. It's not the first number. It's always with the x next to it. So the slope in this particular case is minus 3. And then the y-intercept is 7. So don't be fooled if you flip the form or if it's not in the same order as it always is. Just keep that in mind. Slope is next to the x. All right, so let's look at an example. Well, before we do that, let's talk about what slope y-intercept is best for. So it's a really slope y-intercept, slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, is really, really good for graphing. It's probably the best there is for graphing. Um, you know, there are different ways to graph it, but the way I'll do it is I'll actually use the slope and the y-intercept, but there are other ways, like just subbing in some numbers. The second thing it's pretty good at is finding the equation, although slope point form, I think, is better, um, especially if you're given two points, but this is pretty good at finding the equation from a graph. It's, you know, it's pretty, pretty much a toss-up. All right, let's have a look now at uh, graphing y equals mx plus b. So the first thing we have to do is figure out what our slope is. Slope is negative 4, and the y-intercept is 1. So the y-intercept is a point on the y-axis. So that point is on this line right here. That's the y-axis. So we can plot the point right there. So what we have to understand about slope is that slope is a set of instructions. So I like to, even though my slope is negative 4, I like to consider it over 1. And if it's not already a fraction, I usually write it like that. And what I remember is that slope is rise over the run. So it's the up or down divided by the side to side, essentially. So because my rise is negative, that means I go 4 down. And then because my run is positive, my 1 is my run, and that is to the right. 
So essentially what you need to consider is that plus means um, down or left. And no, that's the that's not true. Plus means upper right. I had it completely backwards. So plus means upper right, and negative means uh, down or left. That should be a colon here. Right? So plus is upper right, negative is down or left. So when you try to figure out how did I know that was down, because it's negative, it means I have to go down. All right, so four down. So I go starting from my point here, I go four units down. So one, two, three, four units right there. And then I go one unit right. So all slope is, it's just a set of instructions that I use to get my other point. So all we need to get a line is two points. And then uh, I don't have a line tool here, so I have to go over here. Um, let me see, lines. So I'll connect up these two points here as best as I can. And there's my line. So simple as that, guys. If you plot your y-intercept, then follow your slope. And then you got your line. So notice that I have a one of the checks I usually do is I look at the sign of my slope. So my sign is negative. And remember that a negative slope goes down and to the right. So this guy is going down. Therefore, I know at least I got that part correct. All right, let's try another example. So this time I have a slope of 3 over 4. So this one's already in fraction form, so I don't have to worry about the over one part. It's kind of easier when it's given in fraction form. That's one of the things I like about that, is that it's slope in fraction form is easy to work with. And then my y-intercept is negative 5. So let's let's plot the y-intercept first. So we go on the y-axis, locate negative 5 right there. <clears throat> Next thing we do is we um, sort of describe what's going on here. So these both these numbers are positive, so that's right and that's up. So we're going to go 3. So there's rise over run, remember. So the rise is the top number, so 3 up. And then 4 right. So we go 3 up from here. So 1, 2, 3 units up. And then 1, 2, 3, 4 right. So we're right there. Then what we do is we go ahead and plot our line. Go right through there, and I'm just going to draw my arrows on the end. We always try to extend our line. A lot of people just connect the two points. We don't want to do that. We want to go on through, sometimes even extend it beyond the graph. Um, but that's really important to be able to do that. All right, guys, so that's how you plot a line using y equals mx plus b. The other thing I'll tell you is that if you ever forget on a test how to plot y equals mx plus b, you make a table of values. And you choose a couple different values for x, maybe three values, and you plug in the points. So you'd still 2, put it in here, and actually just work it out on your calculator and get the points. So remember, you can, excuse me, you're going to always do that if you're stuck. All right, so let's look at the opposite scenario now. So the opposite scenario would be if we're given the equation and we need to find a line. So I'm given the equation. So the first thing I want to find is my slope. And then I want to find my y-intercept. Well, I can find either or. I'm going to find my y-intercept first, actually, because that's usually the easiest. So right here, that is my y-intercept. So it's 3. So that's where it crosses the uh, axis to. So the other thing now, I have to find my slope. So what I do to find my slope is I make a triangle. You can make it anywhere along this line. It can be a big triangle, a small triangle. But we want to make sure that we use exact points. So I'm going to use my intercepts for this. I'm just going to get a different color, and I'm going to use red. So this is the try I'm going to make. So i got to make sure that these are exact points. So that's why I like to use my intercepts a lot of times if they work out. Uh, for me, it's really hard to tell because this is sort of, you know, it's, it's a bit faded here on the computer. So if you had a piece of paper, you'd be able to look and tell. Like sort of, sort of looks to me like this point and this point work out pretty good, but I still can't tell for sure. So I'm going to use these points. So what I do is I look at my rise and my run. So I start from one <clears throat> from one point and I work my way to the other. And I, I take particular attention to whether I'm moving right or down or up or left or whatever. So I'm going, first of all, I'm going one, two, three, four, five units, right? So that's my run. And then I'm going one, two, three units up. So my r slope is rise over run. So slope is equal to rise over run. So that's equal to my rise is 3, 
and my run is five. So you can see how it can be a little bit tricky to find the actual location. So we want to make sure we're going through points that we know for sure. And so that's my three over five, my slope. So then all I got to do is think about my y equals mx plus b. So y is equal to three over five x plus three. And there it is. That is my equation of my line. Another thing you can do, guys, is just, you know, pick a random point on this line that we know really well. And um, just go ahead and sub it in and see if it works. So if you pick a value for x, so if I was right here, I picked a value for x. I know that the y value is so-and-so. Pick it, put it in, and you can work it out and see if it works out to give you that y value. All right, the next thing we want to do is the same type of example. So the thing I, again, what I, what I, one of my checks I look for is I have a positive slope. My line goes up to the right. So this one I know it goes down and to the right, so I should have a negative slope. So again, I need to make a triangle. So I want to pick some good points that I can work with. So I'll do it somewhere besides the intercepts this time. So I'm just going to use these points up here. So here's my, looks like my triangle here. I could also do it on top of the line. So I could do one here. I can make a big one. Doesn't matter where, how you do it. It really doesn't matter. So if you look at this, I'm going 1, 2, 3 down. So since I'm moving down, it's negative 3. And then to the right, 2. I also have a y-intercept here of plus 3. So my m so is rise over run. So rise over run. And that's equal to, so my rise, if you look here, it's negative 3 over 2. Then I got my y-intercept of uh, 3, so that's my b value. So I end up with y is equal to negative 3 over 2x plus 3. And there it is, guys. So I got a negative slope, so that makes sense because my line goes down and to the right. And that's how you find the equation of a line from a graph. So let's look at the other type of common example that is given a lot on tests, which is... Um, Given two points, find the equation in slope point form, or slope intercept form, sorry. All right, so what we need, again, we need y equals mx plus b. So that means we need the slope and the y-intercept. So we have to use another version of rise over run for this particular example. We have to use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is the slope formula. And it's really, really common in like uh, grade 9, grade 10, of course, pre-calculus. Um, and it's very, very useful. So what we do is we have two points here. And we label these points. So I'm going to call this one x1, y1, x2, y2. So again, it doesn't matter what, if this is first point or the second point, I could have labeled this one x1, y1, this one x2, y2. It doesn't matter whatsoever. So what we need to do now is we need to just basically plug this in. So we need to remember that y goes on top. So y over x. Change in y over change in x is another way some people it's just basically rise over run. That's all it is. All right. So my y2 is 8. y1 is 2. So 8 subtract 2. And then y2 is 6. Subtract 3. So I end up with 6 over 3. And that's equal to, we want to reduce this fraction whenever we get it, and that's equal to 2. All right, so now that we have the slope, what I like to think of is we have this. Y is equal to 2x plus b. So I fill my m in with my slope. I already have two points that's on this particular line. So I get to choose which one I want to use. doesn't matter at all. I'm going to choose this one because it has smaller numbers. And I'm going to sub in my x and my y or my y and my x, or x and y, and then find the b value. So I take this point, I notice that this is x, and this is y, or sorry, this is y and this is x, so I say 2 is equal to 2 times 3 plus b. So one mistake that I see a lot of people making is mixing these points up. So that's 2 is equal to 6 plus b. So b is equal to 2, so subtract 6 on both sides. So that's... 2 minus 6, which is negative 4. So I end up with the equation y is equal to 2x minus 4. And that's the equation of my line. So uh, this is a really, really common question, guys, that you might see uh, in your classes. 
And I really hope this video helped you trying to figure out Y equals MX plus B form. And again, guys, if you found this video useful, just share it, subscribe, like, whatever you want to do. Um, comment if you got any questions. Thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you guys in class.